Dear, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your grace. We thank you for this new day, and we thank you for the opportunity to study your word. I pray that you would just continue to work and to bless as we study your word through the I-Team curriculum. I pray for your, your grace. I pray for um, your guidance to be with us now. I also ask that um, as each one of us go out and serve that we would be faithful to the calling that you have for us and that you provide for our daily needs. It's in Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, we pray all these things. Amen. Okay, great. So we have everyone here. All right, so uh, welcome to class tonight. And I just, I'll always be putting the logos up now to really pr be promoting uh, who we are and what we believe in. And so welcome to Eastern Versailles School of Theology. I team, we have several partners here. Uh, soon Lord's Harvest logo will be on here. I just have to make some tweaking, but we're, we're using the I-Team curriculum and the blessing with the I-Team curriculum is that it is PCEC accredited. And so if you take it for credit, um, uh, it, can be, uh, it can be towards your ordination and also licensing through PCEC. And uh, we're also still working with BTC uh, for those who might want a bachelor. So again, I-Team will be the curriculum and of course, we will add, we will add to it. And then just the partners from the U.S. is interpreting the word and also converge. And so we're all partnering together for this great purpose. And, um, and so I just, we always want to bring attention to, to who we are. Um, okay, so chapter four. Chapter four, knowing God, the Son. So this is session, session five in Christian, Christianity 101. And these are the, we could say Christianity 101 the fundamentals of the faith. We're learning the core, the, the most fundamental truths that are non-negotiable. Okay? These are non-negotiable truths that we're learning right here. In, in, in scripture, there are some things that we can agree to disagree on. Maybe it's a difference of interpretation. Maybe it's a difference in uh, uh, application. So maybe some, someone's standard might be more conservative with worship style, with music, with uh, dress. Um, there's debate concerning whether or not we can drink alcohol. So, th so we can agree to disagree on those things. The truths that we're learning tonight and we are learning in Christianity 101, these are not debatable, okay, if we're conservative, if we believe in the Word of God. And so th this is very important, especially for not only for us as leaders or um, leaders in, in a local church, uh, but also as uh, as uh, followers of Christ, and also as we teach others, others and, and ourselves, we need to, to know these truths. Um, so just moving right along here, our learning approach, we have the three H's, uh, head, heart, and hands. And so we're always going to, to review this. I want this to become just, this is going to be in your hard, hard wired into your, your head. We are learning knowledge. The head, <clears throat> we are applying it to our hearts. We're letting our hearts be transformed. The Holy Spirit is transforming our hearts. And then our hands, we're using those. Once our heart has been changed, once we have that knowledge in our head, we're then also using our hands. And so um, uh, very important that the end is not in the head. The end is not even in the heart, but it's the outward. It's the outward. Um, Format of the course, we are doing lecture tonight, and then of course we have homework, group meetings, and also the mentor-mentee relationship. So again, just reminding all of us, this is what we should be doing. So moving along now, we, we, we have a big text to study, uh, just as big as last week. I'm very excited. It's, I'm so excited for us to be able to really get into the Word of God. We are studying about the second person of the Trinity, and so... Um, I do just want to give an overview of the lecture that we'll be doing now. So the overview of our lecture tonight. Objective. What is the objective that we are going to attempt to do? And so I, again, uh, I don't want you to be a master. This is still things that we're learning. There's so much we can learn. So my goal is for you to become familiar with fundamental truths concerning the person and work of the Son of God the second person of the Trinity. So I want you to be familiar with fundamental truths 
concerning the person, work, person and work of the Son of God. In seminary, at the master's level, there can be one class on what they refer to as Christology, the study of Christ, okay? So <laughs> one class, we're doing it in one night, okay? So what I want to emphasize is that there is so much more than what we can study tonight. There's so much more, and um, I do not expect you to, 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 to feel competent or to feel like you've mastered this. This is just a, a really an introduction. It's an introduction, and my prayer for each one of us is that we will study. This will be a springboard in the study of studying about who Jesus is, who Jesus is and what he has done. And so this is my, my goal for us tonight. Um, okay, so what I have on the screen here, uh, one thing that I'm going to implement, uh, especially in, in, not all the time, but, but in, uh, in foundational truths later on in the course, um, we believe only, the only authority for us is the Word of God, okay? So I want to be very clear. The only authority in our church, in our personal lives, is the Word of God. At the same... At the same time, um, we are orthodox. We are uh, we believe in traditional doctrine. So through the ages of the church, uh, there have been core doctrines that have been studied. They have been written. They have been elaborated upon. Just taking the truths of the Word of God and and being concise. Okay. So for example, the Trinity uh, is one of those truths that was fought over for centuries before it was really established. Okay. So one of the things that I want, this is, this is, I'm just really introducing you. I'm not expecting you to know this or to do anything with this, but it is important for you to see that what we believe is not just 21st century uh, doctrine, that there is this tradition uh, of, of good doctrine that where we come from. So what I will do is uh, from the, from the historic creeds of, of church history, I will be, uh, uh, I will be highlighting some of those points. Now, I'm not highlighting everything. There are things in some of the creeds that we disagree with, okay? But in areas where we agree with, it is important for us to hear what our, our fathers have to say. That This is not uh, the same level of, of Scripture. It's only the same level of, of Scripture in as, far as, in as far as it's quoting Scripture, okay? But at the same time, these creeds describe who Jesus is, who God is, better than I could ever, okay? Um, we will focus primarily in the text, but I do just want to give you uh, uh, one statement concerning who Christ is, okay? So I want, I, want, I want you to hear who Christ is, a concise statement of who Christ is, and if you want to talk about it, we can, but we can just move on from that. I, I do think this is important, so I'm just going to read this. And, and maybe it resonates with you. Maybe you can say, yes, I, I agree with that. It, it, it'll sound like scripture because most of the creeds, they literally just take scripture and they're just systematizing it. They're taking different scripture passages and they're just putting it in, uh, in, 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 a, in a concise way. So what this is one confession. We, again, we don't agree with everything the confession says. There are things that, that you will disagree with, but, th but this statement I believe is accurate as I study the word of God and as I read, read the statement, and it's better than I could ever write it. Um, it's coming from the Westminster Confession of Faith, um, chapter eight, verse two, concerning Christ, the mediator. The son of God, the second person of the Trinity, being very and eternal God of one substance and equal with the father, did when the fullness of time was come, take upon himself or him man's nature, with all the essential properties and common infirmities or sicknesses thereof, yet without sin, being, concert, uh, being conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost in the womb of the Virgin Mary of her substance, so that the two whole and perfect and distinct natures, the Godhead and manhood, were inseparably joined together into one person without conversion, composition, or confusion, which person is very God and very man, yet one Christ, the only mediator between God and man. 
And so this is an amazing description. I could not say this any better. There are some very important truths that I want us to be aware of. Number one, uh, Jesus Christ has two natures. He has two natures in his being. Uh, and, the, and the natures are not 50-50 uh, equals 100, okay? They are 100-100 equals 200, okay? Um, and so I'm not going to go further than that. I just I want to emphasize that uh, Jesus, number one, is 100% equal with the Father. Um, it talks about him being of one substance and equal with the Father, yet the second person of the Trinity. So we can talk about one substance three persons. Um, sometimes it's referred to as one being, uh, three persons. Okay, so there's, there's the, the, the mystery is there's one God, yet there's three persons in the Godhead. Okay, and so here it's emphasizing that he is literally human. He's from the substance of Mary, and he's also conceived by the Holy Spirit. So there's two natures here, and this is, this is foundational uh, for all of us to believe and to hold to. Uh, the, the divinity and the humanity of Jesus Christ. Okay, this is so foundational. He must be God and he must be man. Um, any thoughts or comments? I, I don't want to belabor this. I just wanted to introduce you to such a statement as I do feel that it's important for us to at least uh, understand this truth. I, I do want to say one other thing. Here it talks about he he's conceived in the womb of the Virgin Mary. And so we do believe um, that, that Mary was a virgin when Jesus was conceived. Now, we fundamentally disagree with the perpetual uh, virginity of Mary, and we also fundamentally disagree with the fact of the Immaculate Conception, meaning that Mary was conceived supernaturally. I think that there's a, <laughs> there's a debate there. Uh, there's a teaching there from another church, which shall, rename, which shall remain nameless. But we do believe that Jesus was conceived supernaturally um, in the womb of Mary, okay? Uh, I'll go ahead and just, I'll leave that there. Maybe I'll post this on, on the page for us to contemplate. Um, and maybe I can look at some other creeds that we would, agree, again, agree with. Um, uh, but again, just to be very clear, this is only true in as far as it's accurately describing what's in Scripture, okay? So I really want to emphasize that, okay? Um, all right, let's, let's move on here. The, the next thing before we get to our text is I just want to give you some bullet points concerning who Jesus is, okay? We're not going to go to these passages. We do not have time. We are focused on Colossians tonight, but I do want to, to highlight several bullet points here. Who is Jesus Christ? What I'm going to do right now is I'm just looking at the name Jesus Christ, and I'm just giving you a very basic definition. So if someone on the street were to say, who is Jesus Christ? You could easily describe who he is. So the first thing I want us to see is the name Jesus literally means Yahweh saves uh, or, or the Lord saves, okay? So fundamentally who Jesus is, is he is our Savior. Literally, he is our Savior, the one who has saved us from our sins. So that's, that is a fundamental, tr fundamental truth of who Jesus is. The next thing I want us to see is that Jesus is the Messiah or anointed one. Okay, so, so Christ, Christ literally means, uh, Christ is just from the Hebrew word Messiah, and that literally means anointed one. And there's three things that we find in scripture who, of who the Messiah is. These are very foundational to who the Messiah is. These are non-negotiables, and these do put, they put Jesus's uh, ministry uh, in a proper context, okay? Number one, Jesus is king. <laughs> so we could go to Psalm 2. That's the, the coronation psalm of Jesus uh, being crowned the king, being established the king on Mount Zion by, by the Lord himself. That is fulfilled in both the crucifixion and then also in the end, um, at the last day, the very end of time, Jesus will, there'll be, there'll be a time coming when the actual, the, the kingdom of this world will become the kingdom of our God and he will reign forever. And so Psalm 2, it, there's multiple fulfillments of Psalm 2 um, that, that climax in the kingdom of the world becoming the kingdom of our Christ and he will reign forever. Um, 
Number two, I'm not going in order here, but he is our priest. So Jesus is our high priest. This is a fundamental uh, function of who the Messiah is. He not only atones for our sin on the cross, but he continues to intercede at the Father's side forever for us. Okay? So this is a second fundamental function of who the Messiah is, who Jesus is. Okay? And number one, he is our prophet. Um, I'll ask the question, how does the Gospel of John describe Jesus? How does the Gospel of John, there's many ways, but I'm thinking of the, of the great famous passage in the Gospel according to John where Jesus is called something. Can anyone tell me what Jesus is called? There's another name. It's in connection with prophets. So the clue is there's another name that Jesus is called. And it's similar to the word prophet, similar in, uh, in uh, ministry. Does anyone know what that word is? The, the clue is in who is a prophet? What does a prophet do? Think about what a prophet does. And if you can think about who the prophet, what the prophet uh, would do, you would, know, you would know the name that, of Jesus in the Gospel of John. Another name. The, the prophet is the mouthpiece of God. He's the, 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 the prophet is the mouth of God. So that's the clue. Uh, Jesus has been saying about the law of... So, so you're close. Henry, you're close. You're talking about speech. You're talking about saying. What, what is Jesus referred to that's very similar to speech? To, to, I don't want to say the word speaking in, in the Gospel of John. He is the what? The, the logos, right? The word, the word of God. <laughs> in the beginning was the word and the word was, was with God and the word was God, okay? It maybe it's a little trick question. I'm sorry if I was being tricky, but Jesus is the word. He is the word of God. And so prophet was the mouthpiece, the, the mouthpiece of, of, of God. In Hebrews 2, in various ways, in various manners, God spoke to the forefathers through the prophets. In these last days, God has spoken to us through the Son. <laughs> so, so Jesus is the final speech. He is the Word. He is the living Word. He is the living Word of God. And so, we, so literally, He is the prophet par excellence. He is literally God's Word that has come in, in flesh, in flesh. And so these are the three functions of who Jesus is fundamentally. So um, the, the, the last thing I want us to see here is that Jesus is, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. So uh, Philippians 2, 5 to 11, uh, there's a day coming when every knee will bow and every mouth will confess what? Jesus is Lord. Now, this is not, now, now of course, we talked about that, Bible. we talked about the word Yahweh last week, the, the word that's now substituted Lord in the Old Testament. Uh, of course, that's referring to who God is, his name, and also the Lordship, Diba. Um, I want to be very clear. In the New Testament, when we say Jesus is Lord, when Paul says no one can say Jesus is Lord unless in the Spirit, it's not just that Jesus is master. It's not just that Jesus has authority. We are declaring Jesus to be the Yahweh of the Old Testament. Okay, I want to be very clear on that. Uh, uh, some people would not agree with that. I, I, I believe that with all my heart. When, we, when, when, Jesus, when, when Paul says, one day every mouth will confess Jesus is Lord, it's not just he's master, which is true. It's that he is literally uh, God himself, the Lord, the King, the sovereign, the ruler of the universe. Okay? Um, and so these, if you were to say to me, who is Jesus? Of course, we already talked about him being the son of God. And um, perhaps maybe we should include, let's, I, w I wasn't thinking of including that because of our, our previous slide. But, but I would also want to include here, he's the second person of the Trinity. Okay, We talked about in the previous slide, but um, thinking about it now, I would say he's the Savior. Jesus means Savior. He's Christ. He's Lord. 
and I would also say the Son of God. So just bring in the previous slide that we talked about here. So he is the second person of, 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 the, of the Trinity, eternal. The, the, um, and of course, you do have it here in, in number one, the living word of God. Okay. So, um, uh, but this would be a very concise way of describing who Jesus is. These are non-negotiables, okay? And, and of course, Son of God as well, okay? Any questions or comments? It makes sense. I would encourage you to look at each of these passages. I would encourage you to look at each of these passages. And I would also encourage you as you teach about, as you preach and as you teach, we need to be implementing who Jesus is the, the role of Jesus in our sermons. And, and we'll discuss that more when we have like a, a homiletics class or a class on preaching and teaching. But we do need to really start thinking about how we implement, how our sermons, how our teaching can be Christ-centered, okay? Paul says he desired to know nothing among the Corinthians except Christ crucified. Okay, so that speaks to the power and the centrality of Christ in, in Paul's teaching. And um, we need to get to that place. Uh, many times we're so focused on helping others, which is good, that we really, we just jump right into application, giving them suggestions of what they can do. And we really miss the example and the ministry of Christ. They can only do those things through the ministry and the power of Christ, okay? And of course, with that is the Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit is sent by Jesus. So so, but, but, but we kind of don't talk about those things. We jump right into application. And there's so much power in bringing Christ into um, the, the foreground, into the purview, into the center of our sermons, in the center of our Bible teaching and our lessons, and then saying uh, apl application, okay? So I, I do want us to start thinking about this. Jesus as king has so much significance. Jesus as priest uh, interceding for us when we sin, in, uh, offering up the, 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 the sacrifice once for all, for all time, okay? And then, of course, um, him being the living word of God. We don't need to go, we don't need to hear another word. We don't, I don't need to hear another word from someone else. We just need to hear Jesus speaking, okay? And of course, he speaks primarily in the Word of God, and I'm not I'm not denying the possibility of of him speaking also through the the Holy Spirit. Okay, all right, let's go on now. All right, so now we're going to go. Please turn your Bibles to uh, Colossians chapter one, in verses thirteen to twenty three. Colossians chapter one, in verses thirteen to twenty three, and I'm going to bring this up on my screen. There are many passages many passages that really describe who, who Jesus is. I have chosen this passage because I do think it's also really central in, in, um, in uh, I-Team. And I also chose this because of the whole debate with the, uh, the first board of creation. So there's huge debate about, oh, he's a created being. Uh, this is a very debated passage. So I, that's also why I included this. So let's go ahead and read the word of God. And let's hear what the word of God has to say for us. And um, verse 13 of Colossians, 1 verse 13. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things to himself, whether on earth or in heaven, 
making peace by the blood of his cross. And you, who were once alienated or separated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you what? Holy, blameless, above reproach before him. If, <laughs> if you indeed continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting, <laughs> we, we study this in Corinthians, do not, not shifting from what? The hope of the gospel, which you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and by which I, Paul, became a minister. Wow. <laughs> so powerful. Oh, so powerful. So let's go ahead and let's study this passage here. Let's study this passage. And what I want us to do is I, I want us to work through this passage, and just like we've done before, I'll just draw some significances as we work through here. And if you have a question or an observation, you can, you can stop me or interrupt me. I do want us to be thinking about this question about who Jesus is. Who Jesus is. The question I want to ask is, is Jesus a part, looking at this context without looking every, anywhere else, uh, uh, is Jesus a part of creation or a part of creation or separate from creation? Okay, I want us to be thinking about that. All right? Is everyone tracking with me here? Um, so the first thing I want to draw your attention to is the he here. This is the actor, okay? This is actually a reference to God himself, okay? The, the, the actor here is God. This is coming from the, the previous context, verses 12, okay? And so the specific action that, that God has done for us this is the action is he has delivered us. Now, I'm always going to be going back to our old lessons to review so that you will become ingrained in these concepts. We have seen this word delivered before. From our previous studies, this word deliver, what is, a, what is another word for this word uh, delivered? What is another word that we studied, that we, we, we learned about? It's a parallel word, a synonym. English says synonym. Salvation. Yes, yes. Excellent, excellent job. So this is, you could also say saved. He saved us. Or we, we, we want this idea of salvation. So great. So now you're thinking, you're beginning to think. I hope that you're starting to think in, in, in pulling these different passages together. Um, so this is the action, the action, and of course the object. The object is us. This would be, of course, believers, those who are in union with Jesus Christ. And so we are delivered from, we are delivered from uh, so we can say this is a separation. We are removed from this domain. Now, what is another word for this domain? Um, uh, if you look up the word, I don't really like domain. Does someone have a different translation? Would someone like to read for me a different translation? I'm using ESV. So if you have NIV, King James, New American Standard, uh, New Living Translation. Does someone have a different translation that they could read for me? From the American Standard Version, uh, who delivered us out of the power of darkness. Yes, power. I like that word. I like that word, power. Um, uh, yes, power. The, the, other, the other word, the other word that I, when I was looking at this, this word itself, the other word that is is, is also used instead of power, authority. So from our study from last week, who has the authority? Who has the authority to do this? Sino, Sino Paul. The authority is the authority to separate, uh, to bring us out. Yeah, yeah, who has the real authority? 
It's Jesus. The yeah. Lord. yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so New Testament now we see it's Jesus the Lord. Um, but just but just bringing in from our, our, our lesson from last week, I'm trying to... Yeah, it's... Yeah. yeah, excellent, excellent. So I just, again, you are correct, Henry, that Jesus is Lord. It, we're not saying it's not Jesus, but just in this context and, and, and the truth as well, it's, it's, it's uh, God the Father. And we talked about that he has this idea of Lord, has this connotation of power, authority, and presence, Diva. And so here, uh, he, is re he, he has more power than the domain of darkness, and he's able to save us from this. And so uh, where are we being saved to? So where we're being saved to is this, there's a second action here. The second action is this transfer, right? We're transferred into another uh, Another kingdom, Diva, another kingdom. The kingdom of his beloved son. Okay? And this kingdom can be none other, if we're, if we're looking at ideas here, Jesus in, in, in Colossians is referred to multiple times as Messiah or Christ. Diva, we just started our study in Colossians last night, and we saw at least three references already in Colossians 1, 1 to 12, at least three, probably more. Um, we, I think we just did through verse four or five, is that the beloved son is the Christ. And so when you see, when you see beloved son, when you see kingdom, I'm looking at kingdom language here, Diba. Um, this is none other than the, than the, um, the Davidic kingdom promised okay so we are transferred into the kingdom of his beloved son who's what is this kingdom it's the davidic kingdom um uh it's it's the it's the kingdom of the messiah the, the, the messiah this is this is the jewish messiah okay of course it's got it's god's kingdom as well i'm not i'm not creating two different kingdoms what i'm trying to emphasize is the nature of where we are uh this helps us to understand the, the um, big picture. Because later, he's going to call us the church. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is big, trick, big picture in relationship to church. So is everyone tracking with what I'm saying? Is everyone following me with what I'm saying here? I, want to, I don't want to be confusing. If you have a question, please ask a question. Okay. So, so this here, if we're looking back about the three patterns, prophet, priest, king, this is the kingly function, Diba. Kingly function here. Again, coming back to the kingdom. Okay, kingly function here. We're transferred into the kingdom, into the kingdom where the king, his son, is reigning. Okay. Then, then we have this description of who the son is. And what's going to happen now is there's going to be a series of descriptions of who, of, of who Jesus is. Okay. Um, and so we have this idea here of, The Son is the one in whom we have redemption. Now, is, does anyone, can someone, is there another word? I think it's going to be redemption in your translations. But does anyone know what this word redemption means? Does anyone, has anyone studied this word redemption before? Or we can say redemption or redeem. Does anyone have any experience with this word? This is the idea of buying back. So, so, so uh, buying back or uh, purchasing, okay? 
So in the pawn shop, you buy you 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 pawn your item and it's in the pawn shop, and then and then you buy it back. You buy. It. So this is the idea here. This is the idea here of 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 we are bought back and we're brought into the kingdom of God. And what's the payment? What's the payment that Jesus does he give? What's Adam Bayad? <laughs> Adam Bayad. The, the 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 payment is this uh, forgiveness. The payment is the forgiveness of sins. This is the payment. So again, look, we're bringing other ideas together. Our primary problem, our primary problem is our sin it's not demons it's not satan it's not it's not social issues our primary issue manga kapitid is our sin okay um this is the primary issue and so when people are talking about other issues that doesn't mean we don't pray or we don't ask for, for del deliverance from satanic um uh oppression but our primary issue, the, the, the thing that is separating us from God is not Satan. It's not, it's not social issues. It's not lack of, you know, kula mung para. It is, it is the, the primary issue is our sin. And so we are redeemed. <laughs> when we are redeemed and we have forgiveness of sins, the, uh, the peace comes. And we're going to see this later, okay? So at this point, what I want us to emphasize right now what I want us to see here is I want us to, I'm drawing your attention to so the big takeaway here is, is the, is the, is the kingly function is the kingly function at this point. Okay. And then of course here, what we have here, this here, the, this is, This is the priestly function, Viva, the sacrifice. Okay? So we talked about prophet, priest, king. Okay? Now, what, what Paul is going to do is he's going to give us, he is going to describe for us who is God's beloved son. Okay? Who is God's beloved son? And so, uh, here we have now, we have a, a, a description, okay? This is a description, a description sentence. Who is Jesus? Jesus is in the image of the invisible God, okay? So the Son is the, is the, is the physical image of the invisible God, okay? All right? Um. And then there's a clarification of what this is. Okay. Firstborn of all creation. Okay. Firstborn of all creation. Now, um, let's just talk for a minute. What are people saying about this? What do people use this to say? What are you hearing about firstborn of all creation? Let's talk for a minute about what people are claiming um, is being said with this statement, firstborn of all creation. Let's just take a moment here and let's discuss. Inheritance. Huh? The inheritance. He gets the, 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 the full share of the inheritance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so that's, that's good. That would be an appropriate understanding. But I guess what I'm trying to say is, I'm looking first at the bad interpretations. What will other people say this signifies? You're correct that the focus is on the inheritance. It's not, uh, it's on, um, uh, yeah. But I, I want us to first, what are some of maybe uh, cults or other Iglesia ni Cristo? What will they say firstborn of all creation means? What, what does this mean? What will they say? They might misunderstand. Uh, they might misunderstood it as 
he is created. He was he is the first of all the creation. Yes. So, he is a created being. Yes. First created being, diba? That's what they will say. Uh, or they will say he is a part of the creation, diba? He must be, he's firstborn, diba? First created being, you have, you have, uh, you know, ah, he's born. He must be born. Firstborn, diba? So he must be, he, because of this, he must be created. That's what they will say, diba? Sigurado, many cults are saying that he is just a man. He is first. He is, he is created. Okay. Um, now, what I want to do now is we can look. We, what we can do is we can look at this word "firstborn" to see how it's used in Scripture, and and when we look at how it's used in Scripture, we can clearly, we can clearly uh, make an impro an appropriate interpretation that does not say what they're claiming it to say. But what I want to do is, I don't want, that's easy. That's the easy way, okay? I want to look at the context because the scripture is our authority, Diba. I want to look at the context and see, does the scripture, does this context teach us that Christ is firstborn, uh, that he is created, okay? So let's look at the, let's look at the context to see if if that interpretation, so this right now, this would be a, this would be an interpretation, and we want to investigate this claim. Is this? We want to say, uh, Tama Ba, Diba. Is this correct? So that's the interpretation. He is first created being, and we want to ask the question, is that correct? Everyone is tracking with me what, what we're trying to do, okay? So the first thing I want to, I want to highlight here is uh, I, we're going to get into this, okay? I'm excited, okay? So what I first want to do is I want to really highlight. Uh, so what they're saying is that uh, he is the first of all creation, okay? So the interpretation Telega is saying that he is, he is, uh, he is inside, inside this category. Does everyone understand what I'm saying? The claim is that he is the firstborn of all creation, meaning to say that within the, so if you could, let me just diagram this. I just want to be very clear. Okay. So if this is the, if this is the category of all creation, Uh, the sun is inside this. Okay, salaob. Okay, so this is the this is the category here, and the sun is within that category. Okay, everyone is tracking with me. All right, that's the claim. It must be he is the firstborn of all creation. Okay, so then when we come when we come down here, the first thing I want to highlight is that we have this we have this conjunction here, four. Okay. And this is an this is an explanatory, an explanatory conjunction. So an explanatory conjunction is going to explain this, the previous. Okay, so so four is explaining what does it mean that he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Okay, so this is the explanation. Okay, so if 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 the if the the interpretation that he is the firstborn of all creation, it should be easily validated or denied in the expla explanation, diba. Uh, uh, if this is the this is the conclusion, the assertion, the explanation will easily say yes or no. Okay. What I notice here is that number one, we have an action, diba. We have an action here. We're Created. We're created. Okay. So we're right now we're going to go grammatical and syntactical. We're looking right at the text itself. Okay. Um, we're created. Uh, this is, this is the, the verb form. So we can see that, Diba. There's the root. It's the root, Diba. So we're created is the verb. Creation is the noun. Okay. 
The next thing we want to see here is that we have an object. Yeah, you know, you know this thing. Um, uh, what is what is created? Biba, all things, all things. For all things were created. Okay. Looking here, Biba, there's a connection here. Biba, everyone's seeing that. All right. Now the claim is that Biba firstborn Salaob ng all creation. So if if he is part of all creation, I would suspect that he is inside here. Does everyone understand what I'm saying? That that's the claim. Okay. The problem is <laughs> he's not. He's Salabas. Biba, he's Salabas. Salabas. Look at this. We're expecting him to be Salaob, but he met Salabas. He is outside. He is actually what we see here is he's the agent. He is the agent of the action. He's not part of all things. So looking here, do you see, do you see how the two are parallel? The, these two are parallel, and the claim is that that he is he is inside here, but he's salabas, okay? So um, right off the bat, we we really need we really need to question this claim. This claim cannot be it cannot be sustained. He is the first created being of creation, but here. He is outside of the category, okay? The next thing we want to see, Manga Kapatid, is that this action, uh, who is the creator? Sino, sino po ang creator? creator? Who? Who is the creator? Just generally speaking, in, in theology, in conservative Christianity, who is the creator? Sino, sino po? Not a Jesus. So Jesus is the creator, but what I'm saying is, like for example, the the Mormons, the Iglesia and Christo, they will say God is the creator. The, the the one who does creating is God. Uh, this is a this is God is the creator. Okay, or uh, we could say creating is. Uh, Activity and activity of God. Biba, <laughs> who's doing the who's doing the activity? <laughs> Henry's correct. It's Jesus. So this is saying this is telling us that Jesus is God indirectly. Indirectly, you see the do you see the the strong uh, uh, statement? Okay, is everyone understanding? Any questions? I'll I'll ask a question. Go ahead and ask a question. It makes sense. Uh, it for by him the word by him yeah by him. Let's say God the Father. That the Father is the Creator, He did the action, but it has to force through to Jesus. It has to pass through. Without by Him, there will be no creation. Even though there is the Creator, God is the Creator, but without it, it, this word now by Him, yeah, by Him, yeah. he, even though God is there being the Creator. But he needs, God needs him. Yes, 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 yes. So what we want, that's good. Uh, we, we don't, God is still the creator, but he is the means. He is the agent by which God creates. So we even, we look at, we look in John 1, he is the word. So so God's, when God speaks, it's actually Jesus who is the, the, the one who is doing it, okay? So um, yes, excellent, excellent, uh, uh, observation, uh, Kuya Henry. And what I want us to emphasize here is that there's a boundary there. He is not 
a part of all things. Do you see that? In the language itself, he is separate from all things. Now, now, and, and it's all things. What are the all things that were created? <laughs> so you cannot tell a guy, you cannot get around this. It's very clear that he is not part of creation. Now, if, if, if there was to be a doubt, if there was to be a doubt and they say, okay, maybe it's just all things on earth. Maybe it's just, you know, he is still an earlier created being. Maybe it's just in the big creation of the world. He's still created before. Jibak. Look at what Paul, Paul belabors the point of, Paul, be, Paul belabors the point of, of this, uh, Paul belabors the point of where these things are. Dibasa, we have this. We have uh, in heaven, on earth. This is location, Diba. This is location, Diba. Now, when, when Paul would say in heaven or on earth, what he's implying is lahat. He's replying is lahat. He, in the Hebrew, when they would say in, in heaven and on earth, the implication is these are, these are two extremes, duhana extreme, and the implication is everything in between, lahat. Okay? So that's what they would say. They would say, they would say, uh, um, Heaven and on earth, that means lahat. So anything, so it's, it's uh, all places without exception. The next thing we see is the kind. The next we want to see is kind, okay? So all things that were created, where are those things? Those things are in heaven and earth, in all places. And then we also have, uh, well, what kind? What kind? Visible and invisible. <laughs> So it's so again this this could be a reference to angels to quote unquote gods we don't believe and Paul did not believe in other gods but it's visible or invisible god is called the invisible god right so it's uh what things were created by Jesus all things in heaven and on earth but well, what kind of things? What kind of things? Visible and invisible. But what's what again? This would be this would be again the same type of thing. Uh, and everything in between. It's all things. <laughs> this is this is defining. All things, okay? Well, what else? What else do we have? We have thrones, dominions, rulers, authorities. Well, where are these rulers, authorities, dominions? They're in heaven and on earth. They're visible and invisible. <laughs> do you see what's happening here? Paul is trying to emphasize that all things without exception were made through Jesus Christ. If all things without exception were made by Jesus Christ, it is impossible for him to be part of the all things. Okay? He must be God. Okay? So we have, we have, so this is, uh, this would be, the first proof here. This is the first proof. And then this would be the second. This would be the second proof. Yiba. Those would be two proofs that discredit this claim that he is a, a created, or he is a firstborn of all creation, okay? And then the third proof. He's going to state it again. <laughs> he's going to say it again. He's going to say it again. Look at this. He's going to say it again. Watch. All things. Uh, 
action. This is, re this is repeated. This is repeated. And watch this. He's going to say something slightly different. This will be more offensive. This will be more offensive to someone who does not hold to him as the creator of the universe. Again, this is the agent. All things were created for him. But now this is very offensive. This, if, not, if you were not thinking that he is God, Cigarado, now you are. All things were created through him and for him. Through him and for him. I want to, you don't have to turn there. Uh, let's, let's go there. Let's go to, let's go to Romans chapter 11. Who is being, I'm going to read this passage here. And you tell me who is this speaking to? Oh, the, who is the, who is the person that is being, being spoken about? Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments. How unscrutable his ways. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given him a gift to be repaid? For from him, through him, and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. From him, Through him to him. This is blasphemy if Jesus is not God. Diba, this is blasphemy. This is appropriate. This is good. This is referring to God the Father. Diba, this is God the Lord, okay? But if this is true, then this is either. This is either blasphemy or Jesus is Lord. Jesus is God. Okay. Coming back here, then, we have the third proof. Okay? So you have the third proof here, all right? There is no way that you can say in this context that firstborn of all creation is created. That's what I'm trying to say. Jesus is not created. He is the eternal God, the creator of the universe. So the fundamental truth, the fundamental truth that people must accept if they are to be saved, if they are to receive salvation, people must accept this truth that Jesus is equal with the Father. He is God himself. So I was in a SNR. And I met an Iglesia in Cristo. And we were talking, and he asked who I was. I said, I was born again. And he said, oh, I'm Iglesia. And I was like, oh, okay. I said, I said, you have an interesting belief on who Jesus is. And he said, yes, it's different than, it's different than, um, than, than you know, what you believe. But anyway, he, we both believe in Jesus. He's the same God. And I was like, no, <laughs> no. I believe that he is the creator God. The, the, the creator of the universe, we, we, we have, this is non-negotiable. This is non-negotiable. This is non-negotiable. And this is clear. To be honest with you, Manga Kapatid, I'm going to post this later. Anyone comes to your door, Iglesia, Mormon, other, other, just take them to this passage and just, and just, you can even just show them the diagram or you can draw the diagram for them. There's no way. Just say, no, this is not, this is, this is, uh, this is what the word of God says. Join our side. <laughs> Convert. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, okay. Let's move on here. We need, we need, we need to continue because we're running out of time. It's already becoming late. Um, he is not finished yet though. Watch what he says then. Look at this next statement. Look at this. We have another description here. 
Now we have this statement that he uh, is before all things. Now people talk about time. It could be time. I don't want to say that it's, I don't think it's time. I think the best translation here, Manga Kapatid, is above. The word above can also be used. And I think this is better. He is above all things. He is above all things. And that is who God is. God is above all things. And this also, this also um, comes back to this idea of the, uh, we talk about the uh, supremacy or the uh, exaltation of the sun. The supremacy of the sun. He is before all things. Okay. Above. Before is also one of like firstborn. He is above. So coming back here, Manga Kapitid, the understanding here of firstborn, this must be, this should be preeminence. And we can discuss this further, but how, what, is the, what does it mean, firstborn, preeminence? And we have the Bahis repeating himself. And so here, um, okay, so supremacy or preeminence. We can also say here preeminence. Okay, so this is a restatement. The preeminence or the supremacy of, of, of Jesus Christ, okay? And then watch this. Not only is he, is he the creator among the competent, but he is also, he is also He is also the sustainer. He is also, Manga Kapatid, the sustainer. Or we could say the main tainer of the universe. Again, notice here, Manga Kapatid. Do you see what I'm highlighting here? Let's zoom out. Do you see what I'm highlighting here? The highlighted, the highlighting is showing the category of all things. It is always in connection with creation, and he is never apart, except for the claim here, he is always separate from creation. So he cannot be a part of creation. Okay? He cannot be. It's not negotiable. We cannot agree to disagree. This is, this is a fact. Either it's true or not. And Paul is saying he is not cre a created person. He is God, the creator and sustainer of the universe. So we can also look at this description here as well. And then, and then Manga Kapite, look at this. Not only is he uh, those things, he is now also... He is also, Manga Kapatid, the head of the body, the church. <sighs> the head, the ruler. This is a uh, lordship. The church is his body, right? Now, if we, wa we, we want to move away from this idea of church being a, 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 a building, okay? Church literally means uh, people, okay? The Greek word is people, okay? So he is the head of the body. Who is the body? The people of God. We are his body, okay? We are his body, all right? Manga Kapitid, this is why, an implication of this is this is why People that say they're a Christian, but then they're not members of a church and they don't really care to attend church, they're severed from the head.
This is like a, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Does everyone see the picture here? Um, oh, I am a, I'm a follower of Jesus. Oh, what church are you a part of? Voila. <laughs> I just, I practice privately. <laughs> I practice privately. Oh, you're a severed arm. <laughs> How can the head leave you if you are not a part of the body? It cannot be. It cannot be. So there's so much application here. Um, what I, I want to see here, though, is that there are different analogies, okay? Here we have he is the head of the body, the about the church, okay? Up here... Up here, we have the, his, he is the king of a kingdom, okay? The church is the people. So we, we, could, we, could, we could refer to the, to the people being, uh, this is the people or citizens of the kingdom, okay? I'm just trying to make connections for you as, you as you think about this, okay? As you think about the significance here. Okay, so he is the king of the kingdom. He is God. We're being taught that he's God, the creator God, the sustainer, the sustaining God, the God who is to be preeminent, to be supreme above all things, and, and, and most importantly, he is the head of the church. You know, people, people talk about relationships and people do not fear Jesus. They do not fear Jesus. They do not fear the word of God. And um, he is our ruler. And we need to submit to what his word says, what he commands. We need to have a greater fear of who Jesus is. You know, in the U.S., uh, Jesus is my boyfriend. <laughs> they had that say, Jesus is my boyfriend. Or he's the man upstairs with God. You know, he's the one that's going to help me out. We don't have this healthy fear of who he is. Um, moving along here, we're running out of time. And uh, I'm going to try to wrap this up. I'm going to try to wrap this up quickly. We see here now, Diba, he is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead. Diba. So then again, a question could be asked. Diba? Oh, uh, beginning, Diba? Firstborn. Again, he must have this created beginning, Diba? That's what can be responded. This is the, again, the question, correct? He is the beginning. He is the firstborn. Okay. But what people are missing is that, uh, yes, he has a beginning in that he is the firstborn of the new creation. He was, he is the first fruits, the first fruits of the resurrection. Okay? Let's quickly go to one passage to really bring this out, but I, this is really true. Uh, 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 he is not only God, he is not only the head of the church, he is not only the, 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 the king of the kingdom, um, he is also the first fruits of the new creation. The new resurrection. Let's quickly go to 1 Corinthians 15. Watch this. Verse, verse 20. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. So Christ is the first fruits of the resurrection of the dead. Watch. Verse 21. For as by one man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. As in Adam all die, so in Christ all shall be made alive. Christ, the first fruits, 
then at his coming, those who belong to him, okay? So another truth, another fundamental truth that we must accept and believe in is that Jesus is also the first fruits of the resurrection. So Paul says, Romans 10, Romans 10, 9, the about Romans 10, 9. If we believe, if you, if, if you confess Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that he has been raised from the dead, you will be saved. Okay. So there's two things. Confess Jesus as Lord and you believe in your heart that he's been raised from the dead. So what I'm trying to say here is that a fundamental truth of who Jesus is, is that he is the firstborn of the dead. He gives us the assurance that we will be raised from the dead. We will overcome death. We will be saved from death one day. This is a fundamental truth of who Jesus Christ is. The firstborn of the dead. The, 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 the first fruits of the resurrection, the new creation. This is a huge assurance. This is a huge assurance for us. And then, of course, here we have this statement, what is the purpose? The purpose is that in everything, in all things, in everything, he might be preeminent. So again, there's a third statement of, 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 of Christ being preeminent. We talked about that. The supremacy, the preeminence of Jesus Christ. Okay? Um, now, uh, we are running out of time. I'm, I'm, we're, we're, I'll post my notes. I will post my notes. I just want to come back here to say that this here, this here describes his uh, humanity old and new creation, Diba. Remember in the in the in the creed that we proclaimed, he is he is he is the final Adam, Diba, the final Adam. But what in, in the confession, he is human. He is a, a human being, okay? 100 percent human. All right. But at the same time, if it was ever confusing, if it was ever confusing, um, or if there was any confusion. He is just completely obliterating that. Uh, here we have that he is also um, the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. God is, the, the, the divine nature is in God. Okay, the divine nature is in God. Okay, this is another way of saying God himself was pleased to dwell. Okay, so there is, so there is, divinity and then of course humanity two natures without confusion without division without uh what was the third one without composition <laughs> okay so the again these the, the, the creed you're like oh it's so complex i know it's complex but it's because that's what's being taught. That's what's being taught. There's uh, Paul is describing the most, one of the greatest mysteries in the history of, of creation, that God has come and dwelled among man, the, 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 the eternal son of God, the, the, the one who created the world came and became a man, okay? And so this is, this is the truth that Jesus is God and man, okay? And then through him, he reconciled, again, we have the statement, all things, all things. Uh, and this purpose here of to rec reconcile, reconcile. Now look at this, Mungo Kapitid. In, in Ephesians, Paul, uh, Paul talks about God rec reconciling the world to himself. And here, Jesus is reconciling the himself here is Jesus, Manga Kapatid. Whereas in Ephesians 1, it's, it's 
the Father. Is there a problem? No, <laughs> because it's God. <laughs> one substance, three persons. One being, three persons. There's, you know, what I'm trying to emphasize, my competent, is that we. This is the divinity of 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 Christ. The Trinity is not a debatable thing. This is a foundational truth that we have to believe and accept. Diba, last week, we really, we really emphasized last week the fact that of, of who God is. God the Father, he is this uh, self-sufficient, all-powerful, full of authority, all uh, full of authority. He is um, in presence. He is this all-powerful God. And what we're teaching today is that Jesus is equal to the Father. The divine mystery is that he is now the God-man, and he's reconciling all things. The one other thing I want us to think about here, there's so many more things. We're going to close on this um, because we just don't have time to go through all these other things. Maybe we, can, maybe we can finish next week, or I can post the notes and we can ask questions. The thing I want us to be thinking about here is that, uh, again, the all things is more than just our salvation. Does everyone understand that? We tend to really focus upon us being saved. And that's a foundational truth and love of God on the top of it. But, but Christ is interested in reconciling more than just humanity. God's desire is the reconciliation of all things back to God. Think about that. Animals. Uh, um, earth itself, the universe itself, is being reconciled back to God through Jesus Christ. It's a big picture. It's an amazing picture. The last thing I do want to say is that is that this reconciliation, this reconciliation, of course, includes who we are. Okay, it includes who we are, and it's through uh, it's through His body that He does this the body of his death. It's the cross by which God reconciles all things to himself. And I do want to say this, is that we, we, what, what is our response to who Jesus is? This is the conclusion here. Um, Jesus' goal, Jesus' goal for us is this. holy, blameless, above reproach in, in his <laughs> presence, the presence of God, the power of God, the authority of God. It's all over here. It's all over. Jesus wants us to be in his presence. And look at this. What is our response? So this is the application, Manga Kapitid. This is the application here for us. The application for us tonight, you're, you've learned so much deep truth about who Jesus is, who Jesus Christ is, the second person of the Trinity. What is our response to this? What is our response to these amazing truths? Continue. Continue in what? The faith. The faith is more than just more than just believing in Jesus. This is uh, truths that we learned. The faith is referring to truths that we learned. It's dealing with trusting, of course, in Jesus, and then it's also submitting, submitting. Okay. And, and the goal is for us to be stable and steadfast. To be stable and steadfast. What is the thing that we're standing upon that's going to keep us stable and steadfast? The thing is the hope of the gospel, Mother Competent. The gospel is not just for conversion. It is for our sanctification it is our hope it's what we have heard it's what has been proclaimed and 
and, and Paul has become a minister to it. But this here, Manga Kapitid, we are not shifting from the hope of the gospel. If I can just watch, if I can just do this, everything above is now focused upon this. Our call is to stand firm on the hope of the gospel. And for our, the, the challenge tonight is for us to accept these truths and to be committed to this truth about who Christ is. And we are to proclaim it, we are to stand by it, we are to share it with others. Every person in our church should, should be founded, should understand these basic truths, okay? Let me just go ahead, and I want to summarize this, and we'll be done for tonight. So let's go to a summary. Summary of the content of Colossians 1, 13 to 23. There's, uh, there's more things. I'm, just, I'm, I, I'm summarizing some things. Uh, he's the physical image of God. He is the creator God, non-negotiable. He is preeminent over all creation, the exaltation of Jesus Christ. And, and everyone would say amen. Everyone would say amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. My question for you is, on your, in your Sunday service, is, is Christ exalted? Is Christ preeminent in the morning worship service? I, I don't want you to a, a answer the question. I want you to think about it. Is, are the, is the music Christ-centered? Is, is the sermon Christ-centered? Is, is, uh, is if you're reading a passage of scripture, uh, if you have testimonies, if you have prayer, is, is it clear if someone were to come, this text is saturated with deep truths about who Christ is. My question for you is that if someone were to go into your church, would they sit back and say, ah, that's a good moral challenge. I will go do this. Or would they say, wow, Christ is exalted in this service. Um, in, in, a, in your Sunday school, in your Bible study, would someone be uncomfortable because we're talking about the Lord of the universe and what he, who he is and what he has done? Now, I'm not saying to reinterpret everything around Christ. What I am saying is that Application should always be in connection with him. Uh, um, are, are we talking about Christ? Is, is, is Jesus Christ the, the topic? Is, is he brought in in some way or manner? I want us to be thinking about that. He is preeminent over all creation, and most assuredly, he must be preeminent in our service. It's his church. It's his people. People should leave the service with a high view, an exalted view of who Christ is, and they should be propelled to serve God in the week because of that vision, because of that vision. Let's continue on. He is the maintainer of all creation. We depend upon Christ for every second of our day. Do we live like that? Do, our peop do people know that truth? He is the ruler of the church. And this is where it's like, he's the ruler of the church, but we don't really talk about him in the service. We, we, we save him to talk about him in evangelism. We save to talk about him maybe in, in, uh, in preaching the gospel. But when it comes to the worship service, we're, 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 we're talking about, I'll tell you this, I've been in services where his name is not mentioned one time. On the top of his, in, in the preaching, his name is not mentioned one time. Not one time. That's a problem. That's a problem. And, that's, and, and the U.S. churches, it's a problem. So I'm not, I'm not thinking about a Filipino church. I'm thinking about in the U.S. I've heard it. Uh, um, he is the ruler of the church, and everyone should know that is the case. Um, lastly, 
He is the last Adam, the beginning of the new creation. He is the resurrection, the new resurrection. This is our hope. He is the son of God, both God and man, 100%, 100% of each, which would be 200%. And lastly, he is the means by which God reconciles creation to himself. I want us to be thinking about that. And then lastly, his sacrifice on the cross accomplished this. And that was the the last part of the session. So there's more truths about this. Uh, maybe I can write it in a better way, um, but but these are found these are foundational these are foundational things that we all need to fully understand and accept. And our services, our small groups, our Sunday school, um, our family they should be hearing the name of Jesus. They should be hearing the name of Christ. They should be hearing us talking to Him. They should be hearing us talking about Him. There should not be, of course taking the Lord's name in vain, but, but everyone, should, everyone should know that Christ is preeminent in our lives. And so the challenge, we can say, yes, Christ is preeminent in all creation. Amen. My, my challenge for you is if someone were to look into your life, into your church, into your small group, into your Sunday school class, would they say, wow, Christ is preeminent there? That's the challenge. I'm not judging. I'm not saying you're not doing it. If you're doing it, th- th- that's what our goal is. But I, I want it. All of us should be thinking, how can we exalt our ruler, our king, our prophet, our, our priest? Um, other passages for scripture before we go. Uh, these are, th- these are th- four other passages that, re- now some of this is big. So Ephesians chapter 1, 2, and 3. But these are foundational passages for who Jesus is. And there's many more. I've just chosen four. But these are very significant. So if you were to, if you were to say to me, Tim, among the five passages d- teaching who Jesus is, Colossians 1, 13 to 23, John 1, 1 to 17, Philippians 2, 5 to 11, Hebrews 1, 1 to 14, Ephesians 1 to 3. I mean, really, you can just have the whole book of Hebrews. But these would be four passages plus Colossians that really give us, these are foundational Christological passages of scripture. And, and, and we need to be studying these. And then just last, oh, and <laughs> Corinthians 15 too. I'm sorry. Sorry. I missed that one. Um, I missed that one. So six, I have six for us. Okay, so just by way of conclusion, our assignment for next week is, Chapter five, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Um, let's, let's prepare for next week. I will send out the passage of scripture that we will be looking at for the Holy Spirit. Uh, meet with your group to discuss questions and also prepare your questions if you have for a quick review for next week. I do want to uh, thank you. It seems that everyone is doing a great job and um, I want to thank you for your faithfulness and we are coming close to halfway. So in two weeks, we'll be halfway through the first course. So I'm just so happy. I'm so happy and thrilled. And um, uh, the Lord is really moving in powerful ways. And um, I hope that this lecture can really break down concise facts about who Jesus is. I'll try to give, I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll give a handout of the breakdown of the passage maybe tomorrow or Friday. And then also I'll have a sec a separate piece of paper with the passages of scripture and also just some, some core foundational truths for Jesus Christ, the, the, uh, the second God, uh, the son of God, the, the, the second uh, person of the Trinity. And um, this is foundational stuff. We cannot compromise these things. This is deep truth. Uh, this is deep truth, Mona Kapatid. But Paul in Colossians prays for that you would be filled with the knowledge of God, and also uh, full of good works. So it's not just good works. It's just not knowledge. It's both. And again, I team, head, heart, hands, okay? Head, heart, hands. And so right now, I'm filling your head, (laughs) and I want it to go from here to your heart. And then I want it to see it in your hands. I want us to be known as as uh, exalting 
the name of Jesus Christ. We must exalt him in everything we do and say, and we all fall short. I fall short. We, are all, fall, we all fall short of this, but this needs to be our goal. That everyone here, you, diba, diba, mga kapitid, diba, in, in, in the Catholic Church, Mary is exalted. I mean, Mary is, Mary is the one. Diba, I mean, this is honest. Mary is the one. Diba? Our churches, I want, let's our prayer be Christ is magnified in our ministries. He's magnified in our families. He's magnified in our lives. Let us pray for that. Let's close in prayer. Um, uh, Kuya, Kuya Henry, can you close us in prayer? Just the specific prayer request that Christ would be magnified in our ministries, in our families, in our, uh, in our lives. Uh, Father God, we thank you for allowing us to see who your son Jesus Christ is for us. Father, uh, you have taught us, you have fully taught us tonight that he was before creation, he was above all creation, and he is you himself, your exact image. Your invisible has become visible for us. Father, in sometimes we fail to magnify, we fail to glorify this Christ in our life, and we ask for your forgiveness and repentance and peace. Father, may you remind us also always that in all things we do, Jesus Christ should always be glorified in everything we do. Father, we thank you for letting us know how great love you have shown to us through your son, Jesus Christ. May you continue to let, remind us, continue to remind us that Jesus is not just an ordinary person, but he should be so good. He should be above all, all creation and all honor and you should be given to him. Thank you, Father, uh, for this evening. May you bless us tonight with good rest and with renewed energy for tomorrow. Bless our uh, classmates uh, who are here now. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.